Hello, folks. I'm Jeff C., and you're not. And I'd like to welcome you to the Manly Pinterest Tip Show. We've got a great show for you today. I've got a very special guest. But first, I'd like to ask you to do me a personal favor. You know, a lot of you know that I do those Manly Monday little short little videos. They just got approved for iTunes, and I put the link in the, uh, the notes here. If you guys would go over there and subscribe and leave me a review, that would really help me out. I'd really appreciate that. Uh, it, let me see if this uh, little video podcasting thing is going to work or not. So if you do that, I'd appreciate it. But enough about me. Today's special guest is Cynthia Sanchez. Now, Cynthia is the CEO and founder of Oso Pinteresting, a business that helps businesses, bloggers, entrepreneurs use Pinterest to its fullest potential. But prior to her venture in social media, she worked as a registered radiation oncology nurse. With her background in the medical field, she brings such a holistic approach to social media with her planning and her strategy. She has quickly become a sought-after speaker, writer, podcaster, coach, uh, and her motto, motto is that you hear at all of her end of her shows is, don't just pin it, do it. And I am so excited to have Cynthia on the show. Welcome, Cynthia. Hey, Jeff. Thank you so much. I'm so thrilled and honored to be here. Thank you. Well, yeah. I was t- we were talking in the green room, and Cynthia, you know, it may be a good thing or a bad thing, but she's probably the reason, she is the reason that I even uh, started looking at Pinterest, I was binge listening to the Social Media Examiner's podcast and she, uh, driving back from Kansas visiting relatives, and she came on, and I just like, i got to find out more about this Pinterest thing, this pin, Pinterest thing, and uh, kind of went from there, and so uh, you, you're, it's your fault. Oh, <laughs> well, well, depending on the day, I'll take the blame, or the credit, whichever way it goes. Okay, there we go. <laughs> And so as my live audience, to see you guys have showed up, and I really appreciate it. If you have questions for Cynthia, make sure you enter those in the comments, and we'll try to pull them up during the show today and answer those for you. So uh, just enter away as we go along. So I'm going to go ahead and start with some just kind of some basic questions, Cynthia. Now, can you tell us a little bit about your backstory? I mean, uh, I mean, going from a nurse to a big the spokesperson for Pinterest is kind of a big jump. <laughs> well, I wish I was the official spokesperson for Pinterest, but I'll take what I can get, right? The unofficial way is working out pretty well. Um, and as far as how it all started, it's very similar to your story. I came across a podcast, and it told me that I could start a business with a blog. I'm like, what? I can't do that. You know, I was working as a nurse and having a great time doing that. Um, but it's like, well, what if I could start a little side business? What if I could eventually build that little side business to be something really big and leave, you know, the nine to five kind of role here. Um, and I thought I would do something related to oncology, related to nursing and, and the kind of job that I had at the time, but I knew nothing about WordPress. I knew nothing about having a, a blog. I knew nothing about widgets or plugins. It was like completely foreign to me. It was much easier to do the kind of work I was doing with, you right. know, physicists that I was working with at the time, much less try to get a you know a WordPress site up. Um, but you know, I, I you know just kind of got obsessed and, and figured out how to do it. But what was I gonna blog about? And at that time, Pinterest was taking over my life. I had fallen in love with it, and which was really weird for me because I've been online online a long time, used the internet, like they said, I forget where I hear heard this, but since the internet was black and white, I was on the internet, you know. Um, a long time, but nothing that I'd ever come across had kind of sucked me in and I had found so useful as I found Pinterest to be. Um, I was like, well, so I'll start writing about that, the things that I'm trying, the things that I'm cooking, what I'm buying, where I'm going because of Pinterest. And um, I quickly found out how time-consuming it was to blog and to create the project or make the recipe or do the all the things that I had to do for whatever it was, take the pictures, write about it, upload it, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so it quickly turned into also an interview type of blog where I would talk to other bloggers and what they were writing about on Pinterest and things like that. So that's kind of where the interview started. And a few months after I started my uh, blog, I bought some business cards because I was going to go to a conference. I went to Blog World, uh, the last Blog World in New York City with my husband. That's where we spent our 20th anniversary. So <laughs> romantic. Um, and, you know, just to kind of hope to figure out more of the business side of blogging. And, you know, so I had those business cards. I ended up leaving them at different places, you know, around my, my local area when I got back home. And a business owner found my card and said, hey, we want to hire you to help us do Pinterest. 
Well, I don't, that's not what I do, you know. We had a meeting. Like, are you sure you want me? I, I don't know what to do. I'm a nurse, you know. You got a sprained knee? Yeah, sure, I can help you out, you know. <laughs> but when it comes to social media marketing, uh, no. And they said, well, you know, we're we like your website. We like what you've done so far. We like you. We're not. We're really new at our business. Maybe we could help each other out. So they were my first clients, and then I just dove headfirst into absolutely everything that I could get my hands on as far as social media marketing. And that's when the blog shifted and a few months later the podcast started and here we are very very cool very yeah. cool um, so what do you think it was that that I mean you said it was it was kind of useful was that the main reason you kind of you know picked uh, Pinterest over say Facebook or Twitter or something like that yeah uh, definitely I had been on Facebook for years um, you know even when it was just to I was taking college classes so I had the edu address way back in the beginning that you had to have to get a Facebook account because it was just for college kids right um, so I mean but it never really just yeah okay I was there my friends were there eventually my family was there and you know but it got a little petty sometimes got a little bit gossipy sometimes um, and that just you know just didn't really appeal to me you know to be there all the time um, and you know so I would check in a couple of times a month a couple times a week no big deal but once I jumped on Pinterest I did find that it was all it was kind of selfish I guess it was all about what I was interested in all about what I wanted to know about and it connected me to different places online that I would have never discovered before new shops new blogs new information um, because on Google searches at that time it's changed a bit since then um, it would kind of bring up the same big 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 blogs the same big websites you know over and over and over again and you know unless you dig to page 32 of uh, Google you're not gonna find some great you're gonna miss a lot of great stuff you know I guess and Pinterest just brought it all to me at one big shot very cool well on that subject because um, there have been a lot of changes in Pinterest and mm -hmm. you know some people have said it's not as useful as it used to be I mean um, I've been reading comments on social media we're both part of Kelly Lieberman's excellent pin chat Mm -hmm. There's a lot of conversations going in there. Um, it's it looks different now. Pinterest looks different, and now we have this smart feed. Can you kind of give us for people who don't know what the smart feed is, kind of a general overview of of what it is? Sure. Um, Pinterest smart feed is their way of filtering what you see in your home feed to bring you the best stuff. Um, there are, I think the last number I heard was something like 30 billion pins on Pinterest. That's a lot of pictures. <laughs> and to just, uh, the way Pinterest used to work, it was you would see everything of every account or board that you followed in chronological order. Um, so that's a lot of information to, to give to anyone. And some of that, you know, is going to be relevant. Some of it isn't. Sometimes you follow accounts because they have great, you know, boards about a particular topic and then they also have a board about an unrelated topic and then you see all of these pins about something you care nothing about you know I mean all of a sudden I'm seeing pins about you know somebody's you know child's birthday party plans like okay good for you but I don't need to see 300 pins about you know whatever it is they're planning um, so Pinterest is kind of is, Filter is now filtering feeds with smart feed and taking into consideration where you've been on Pinterest, where you've been on the internet, um, things you're clicking on, things you're repinning, things you're engaging, um, the quality of the pin. Is it is it a good image? Does it have a good description? Is it has it been pinned a lot before on Pinterest? That's that's I think a really key one there for using it for marketing. Um, so it, it's trying to just bring you the best stuff, the most relevant stuff. And when this first came out, I got mad. I got angry. It's yeah. like, who the heck is Pinterest to decide what I see? If I don't want to see it, then I'll unfollow. And I got, oh, I just kind of, the claws came out for a minute. Right. Uh, <laughs> but then I thought about it for a little while, and it's like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. And and they do have to improve their product for their customers. I am not the average user. Um, you know, back in the day I was, but now I look at Pinterest with you know, kind of through different glasses. Right. Um, but so it does make sense, and I think it it's going to encourage businesses using Pinterest uh, as a marketing tool to step up their game a little bit and to really think about it in a different way. If they want to get their stuff out there, if they want to get their stuff seen on Pinterest, um, then they're going to have to bring better stuff. And it doesn't mean, I, I still haven't seen yet, when I first kind of discovered SmartFeed when it first came out, I would pin something from my blog, let's say, and then you know, you, you're used to seeing it in your feed right away. It's like, and it didn't show up. And it's like, whoa, I know I just pinned that. Where did it go? And I checked my boards and, yep, it's there. But why am I not seeing it in my feed? And that really freaked me out. That's one of the things that made me a little bit mad. Right. Uh, but then I, now that it's kind of been around for a few weeks, I noticed that it doesn't not ever show up. It just may show up lower in the feed. 
Right. So instead of it being up at the top where you're used to seeing something you pinned, if you refresh it, then it goes lower. So it'll show up as you scroll. So instead of that chronological order of stuff, Pinterest is randomly bringing in stuff. So instead of it being the very first pin you see of something you just pinned, maybe it's going to be the 50th pin you see or the 20th pin. Um, so I still haven't seen them completely shutting everything out um, right. or a lot of things out. Um, sometimes it just takes a little while for it to show up. Yeah, I think my, my biggest thing was it felt really heavy-handed. I mean, you know, I would pin, I joked about this the other day, but I would pin, like, let's say a funny cat picture to a secret board. Well, all of a sudden it seemed like my, my I didn't even see pictures anymore. My, my feet just meowed at me. <laughs> it was, I mean, it was felt like it was just all that stuff. But just right now, I think they're tweaking it a little bit, and I'm, like you said, they're farther on down. But that was my thing. I was like, man, I can't even, you know, you once in a while I'll pin something funny and it felt like I was just getting flooded with stuff. So mm -hmm. Yeah, I think they're they're playing with maybe the sensitivity levels of things, where they're taking your information, and you can go into some of your account settings and tweak, you know, clear the most recent searches, clear this, don't monitor my you know, I forget what it's not monitor, but I forget what the exact phrasing is, you know, not to really track your your internet use and that kind of stuff, which is really important if you're you're, you're managing accounts for, for clients. Um, so yeah, there's some things I think that might kind of play into that as far as your own account settings, but I think it's we're still early days and it's gonna it's gonna have to be refined a bit. Yeah. Well we have a question real quick I want to grab um, on this topic and this is from Elisa. She goes, Cynthia, on a recent podcast you suggested maybe waiting a few hours or even days before pinning your latest blog post to give it time to accrue some social proof. Do you think Pinterest is looking at social proof from other platforms like Twitter or Google Plus when determining its value in the new smart feed? Um, I haven't heard anything about getting that type of influence or whatever from other social networks. Um, speaking with Susan Warner from Ahology, uh, she noticed, or maybe from their data that they're able to get on their side of things, um, that possibly, and it looks like she's here. Um, hi, Susan. Yeah. Um, <laughs> in, in our conversation, we thought maybe possibly how many times that linked, that pin has already been, or that URL has already been pinned to Pinterest. I'm not sure if it's specifically that particular image or if it's just the whole, you know, the, so that link from that blog post or whatever, you know, the case might be. But I think that's what the proof that they're looking for. Um, so I'm testing right now to see if it does work if I wait, you know, a couple of days to, to really expect a lot of repins from it. You know, give more people time to for myself to pin it or maybe for other people to pin it for then for it to really start growing. Because I know for a lot of accounts out there, once they wrote the blog post, I know for me, I just can't wait to pin it. Um, it's kind of, I have to hold myself back a little bit now. Um, once you pin it, you were, you were used to getting a lot of repins right away. Well, if it's never been pinned before and you're the first to pin it, it might not be shown to as many of your users or your followers as it had before. Um, so it's still something I'm testing out. Um, you know, does it, is it better, am I getting better results if I pin it right away or if I wait a day or two? Um, to let other people pin it, let Pinterest see, yes, people are interested in it, then pin it to my account. So Good. it's a little bit of testing still. Yeah, that's, those are great. Those are great points. Um, and, and, you know, I wanted to kind of talk a little bit about, you know, Susan was on, uh, was my last guest on the show, mm -hmm. and um, one of the things she mentioned uh, on your, that kind of affects with this new smart feed was, you know, who you follow, uh, related pins, and interests. And she said also that uh, she, they, they've kind of tracked that the pins are weighted by how influential a pin is, which you talked about, but how engaged the user is. Now, um, do you know, I mean, is there a, do you know of any sort of threshold of engagement, um, what, it, what, what they're looking for on Pinterest? I'm not sure specifically. I wish I had that crystal ball to look into their offices to right, see. Right. But, <laughs> but ever since the very beginning of Pinterest, uh, when I first started using Pinterest, you know, especially for the marketing side of things, I noticed that when I would change even just one word in the pins description, I would get more repins from it. It was just kind of weird. I don't know. Maybe Pinterest would show it up in search results differently. Maybe it looked like something a little bit newer or something. Um, and I also noticed if I repinned from new people that I wasn't following, if I did searches and pinned from there, if I kind of took advantage of all the features of Pinterest, then there was a little bit more activity on my account. I was getting more followers. I was, you know, things were happening. Um, so I think engagement overall is, is that. Are you commenting? Are you liking? Are you pinning from more than just a few, you know, accounts. Are you pinning from the internet? Are you kind of mixing it all up? Um, I think that's kind of what the engagement side of things is. Gotcha, gotcha. Mm -hmm. um, there was some there was some talk uh, yesterday. Um, uh, Peg actually put in the uh, that uh, Kelly Lieberman's pin chat group was asking, 
um, if people were seeing more likes happening because they've really seen them shoot up lately, and a lot of people um, reported that they were, do you think that's because of the smart feed as well? I think it might be. You know, before likes were kind of, eh, why bother? You know, <laughs> I mean, unless you just wanted that random category of stuff that wouldn't necessarily fit onto a board. Um, but I think uh, I'm noticing. Well, actually, I know I'm noticing now. I went to uh, the popular category on Pinterest, and that always used to be a mystery to me. It's right. like this pin has no comments, no likes, and no repins, but it's in the popular category, and it was something random. It's like not even something that you know is popular on Pinterest. You know. Uh, in, in general, and um, but now when I'm going back to look at it, it does make a little bit more sense. There, are, most of the pins have quite a few repins. Most of them have at least a comment or a couple of likes. So I think those likes are kind of helping weigh that influence on Pinterest. So if there's a lot of people out there working with each other to try to push each other's influence up, or um, you know, out there for marketing like we are, yeah, we're going to maybe start liking things too. Um, so maybe that that might be a reason. I'll just kind of have to wait and see how it all plays out. Yeah, I, I just was, had been testing, liking more just to see if I could calm down my smart feed, and it seemed to help. It seemed to be getting me more of what I wanted to see. Um, uh, Susan Jackson actually just said, uh, we believe it's the link plus photo connection. The more times a combo has been pinned by whomever, mm. the more interest will show in people's feeds. Uh -huh. so thanks, so, Susan, for yeah. chiming in there. So... Mm -hmm. um, one of the other questions I wanted to talk to you about was, um, let's say I'm a, I'm a small business, a new small business, and I've heard about Pinterest, and I really you know, want to get into it. Am I going to have more trouble now with the smart feed of kind of cracking into Pinterest, do you think? You know, that's that's a tough one. I don't know. I, I have noticed that it is taking longer for new accounts to attract those followers, and this isn't something I've just noticed you know, in the last few weeks. This has been going on for the last you know, year or so uh, because there's a lot more users. There's a lot more competition and I think SmartFeed might make it even more of a challenge. I think they're really wanting to you know, help boost the quality of the stuff that we see on Pinterest so that might filter things out. I also notice now um, and what happened before, oh gosh I don't even know when this stopped, um, but when you opened up a new account on Pinterest you were asked um, you know, what you were interested in it would automatically let you follow some accounts or would make you follow some accounts, people you would never heard of and some of those accounts had over a million followers already. It's like why am I following these people? They already have a you know on my side of things I'm looking at that way. The average user is like ooh you know a lot of stuff there. Um, but now when you open up a new business account anyway you're not automatically following anybody. So those pe there's a lot of people on Pinterest that built their following like that. For some reason they won the Pinterest lottery, their account got chosen and they built up this huge follower base without doing anything really. Right. Um, you know or being active on Pinterest for a little while but not anything above and beyond that I could tell. I can never figure out what it is you know that the, made those accounts quite so special. Um, but now that's not happening. So those types of you know big, huge, massive followers that you know we saw for some accounts isn't going to happen that way anyway. So it might be a little bit more challenge, but I th challenging for a new business to grow their presence. But I think once again that kind of raises the bar. What do they have to offer the community? Are they going to have to promote that account more um, in other places? They're going to have to let people know they're on Pinterest. Are they going to have more content to share on Pinterest? Are they going to have more blogs, more videos, more podcasts with pictures, um, <laughs> or even just SoundCloud? Um, to pin to Pinterest, you know, the more you're on there, the more you have to share. I think it will just work out to your benefit. Gotcha. Well, so now it seems like you know you talked about raising your the bar kind of and really bringing your A game. It sounds like you know pin and board descriptions are going to be more important than ever before. So, mm -hmm. do you have some advice or best practices that you would give people on creating some great board descriptions? Uh, keyword research. Just start doing keyword research because Pinterest, we know, has developed more into a search tool than necessarily a social network. Uh, the thing that attracted me to it in the beginning. Um, and all that is happening more and more through keyword phrases. So do your keyword research on Pinterest. Do keyword research on Google because Pinterest boards are ranking on Google. Um, if you want your board to rank on Google, choose a you know a keyword friendly search term for Google um, if you really wanting to track a, a lot of attention on Pinterest maybe a little bit more search friendly for Pinterest not that they won't ever overlap a lot of times they do um, but you know do do 
keyword research by using the search bar. Start typing in just a, a name or, or a word that's related to your business, um, a couple of phrases, and, and see what pops up. See what suggestions pop up. Search for other boards with the same title. See what words people are using in pins. I just got off recording a podcast episode uh, for my show with a lady who um, is thinking about creating a, a board related. She's, she sells educational products, and she's thinking of starting a board for educator gifts is what she was going to call it. And it's like, okay, well, great. You know, if, if I want to buy something for my, you know, kid's teacher, this will be a great source for me to come to because it's one teacher selling for another teacher. Well, but as a parent, I wouldn't call it educator gifts. I would call it teacher gifts. That's right. what I would search for. She's like, you know, I hadn't thought about it that way. So sometimes people in the industry, whatever it might be, tend to think of things in a certain way or in certain words. But sometimes thinking of it from your customer's perspective and naming it in your customer's perspective, your boards um, and those descriptions and all that kind of stuff will, will help you out. That's a great piece of advice. In fact, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll ask my wife and say, what would you do or how would you go – because she's not into marketing or any of that stuff. Yeah. A lot of times we get blinders on, and so asking somebody else say – well, if you're looking for something, what would you type in Google? You know, and, and a lot of times you'll get some things like, I never thought about that before. Exactly, so. exactly. Yeah, so, I mean, your board titles are a place where you can show some personality and get kind of cute and, and that kind of stuff, which is good, I guess. I mean, it is. We, we don't want it to just be, you know, keyword, 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 you know. Right. But yeah, put, try to put the keyword at the front or the beginning of your board title and then get fun afterward, then get cutesy, um, you know, and, and then show some personality, show some humor or whatever it is that, that reflects your business. Gotcha. Well, this kind of ties into uh, descriptions. Um, Laura Williams asks, please give me the best answer that you can on this oft-asked question. Hashtags or no, the oh. answers I have, <laughs> I have for here are all over the place. So what would you tell her? Hashtags with a strategy. That's my answer. No. Um, so really strategically well thought out hashtags can work for you on Pinterest. So if you have a unique phrase, a unique hashtag that goes with your business and you can include it in your pins, like for me, my phrase is Pinteresting. Um, and so every now and then I'll put hashtag oh so Pinteresting in my pins and when people click on it, most of the stuff that shows up is mine, which is great. Mm -hmm. But they can only click on it from the web slash computer version of Pinterest. You can't, they don't function on mobile. And all they are is a shortcut to do a search for all of the pins with that word or phrase in it. Um, I worked with a client who had a unique hashtag. It was create a buzz. This was for a stationery company based out of the UK. And, you know, they want to create a buzz with all their invitations and cards and whatever. And they were using that for a while. And then all of a sudden they started uh, hashtagging a couple of pins with the word bow or ribbon, it was ribbon, um, because they had a ribbon in one of their cards. But, okay, so let's take a look at both of those examples. When they click, when somebody clicked the hashtag ribbon, it would take them to every picture and pin and, you know, some in the description, some just in the URL that would show up with the word ribbon in it. And that could be everything from stuff that goes in your hair to stuff that works on craft projects to, you know, gift wrapping type of ribbon. You know, so all sorts of things. But when they found their create a buzz hashtag and clicked on that, it was just products from their business. It was all mm -hmm. of their stuff. Right. So it worked out really well from them. Thing about hashtags though is that sometimes they don't get indexed by Pinterest. I had this business owner email me over and over, why isn't my hashtag there? What's going on? What am I doing wrong? And we looked and I looked at the boards. The account was a good account. Very about cats actually um, <laughs> and um, for some reason their hashtag just never got indexed um, mm. and you know if it works out for you great if it doesn't it doesn't um, but I see pins that have like four or five hashtags on it yeah no don't do that that, that works great on Instagram doesn't work great on Pinterest yeah well, that's that's a good answer in fact I know that I mean they even put in their blog I think that Hashtags don't work like they used to work, um, and I, and and promoted pins. I was testing the promoted pins out, and I had I always use Manly Pinterest Tips because it's for branding. That's my hashtag, yeah. and I had something else like Pinterest Tips or something, and they rejected that promoted pin because it had more than one hashtag. Mm -hmm. And so they're really trying to crack down on the hashtags and and let people know it really doesn't work as well. You know, you know, to stuff them in there in the descriptions like you know some of us were used to doing. Yeah, and who knows, that could impact your, your results as far as smart feed goes. If your pin description has four or five hashtags in it, oops, you're not going to be shown, even if everything else was perfect. You know, who knows? Yeah, yeah. Here's another question that, um, from uh, Hard SD. She says, here's a question right off the bat. 
uh, Cynthia, regarding promoted pins, I have heard conflicting information as to what can be included in the pin itself and in the pin description. So what say you? Can I include something to the effect of this promotion ends 12-15-2014, for example, if I am pinning something related to a special promotion or sale on my website? I don't know the answer to that one. Yeah, I'd have to go back and look. Uh, Pinterest sp uh, spells out specifically really clearly what they do want you to include or not include. I know for sure that cannot be in the image itself. They don't want kind of limited promotional deals or prices or percent off or any kind of crazy call to action or fake buttons or anything like that in the image itself. In the description you have a little bit more play. Uh, for example, I saw, uh, or a little bit more, I guess, leeway, I guess. Um, I saw a pin from from Wayfair, which is an online kind of home decor retailer. And their promoted pin, um, in their description, they had up to 70% off of your home furnishing or something like that. But it said up to 70% off, which is something they kind of say you can't do within pins. Um, but Wayfair, was, I think, was able to do that because, well, one, because they're a huge company, and two, because it, that's kind of their tagline. They use that everywhere. Um, so they were able to use that there. Maybe they had to talk to Pinterest about it. I don't know what happened behind the scenes. Um, but I, I, they really aren't wanting you to use promoted pins for those short-term sales. Um, everything that I've seen about them, the pins that I'm you know, kind of seeing out there um, aren't like, you know, for this week only, you know, half off of whatever the product is. But that doesn't mean you can't get creative with your pins. Um, a pin that popped up recently was from Walmart and it was very football related. They had platters of food with like on a chalkboard with the X's and O's behind it and the arrows. So it, you could tell it was like a football related pin and you uh, you know, if you just kind of came across it on Pinterest, you would think that it was maybe for the recipes for tailgating or football parties or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but then as you read the description, it was for this particular line of serving platters. When you clicked on the pin, it took you to the sales page for all of that line of serving platters. So it wasn't about recipes. It was it was very timely and football related, seasonal, but it wasn't it wasn't going to a piece of content like you know a recipe or something like that. So and that was able to go through. And I think that was very creative to kind of tap into that season, um, you know, get people interested in you know that pin, that image that was you know really a, a great image, but then take them over to where they can buy those platters. And it kind of described that in in the description. That's very cool. That's very that's very interesting. Um, <clears throat> I've got one more question from here from the, my my friend Nazim. He goes. What support tools do you use for tracking and working with Pinterest? And my first answer for that would be the new analytics is awesome mm -hmm. that Pinterest has built into it. But are there any other tools that you would use? Uh, Ahology and Tailwind. Um, Ahology, if it works right for your blog and for your content, and you know there is an application process for that. And Susan's down there, so I'm sure you can ask her all about that um, if you have questions about that. And Tailwind is a analytics and scheduling tool that's available out there that I've been using, gosh, since since they first started too. Um, we've kind of grown up in this Pinterest world together a little bit. Um, a, a great teamwork in there as well. So. Yeah. yeah, those are the, the tools that I recommend right now. And Google Analytics. I yeah. think that that is often overlooked and people, you know, are also always trying to find, you know, this external third party, you know, what's the latest, you know, mo you know, analytics or tool or whatever to use with Pinterest. But Google Analytics gives me a lot of information, you know, not just on Pinterest, but other things as well. But I get a lot of information from there that I don't get from some of the other tools. So it's it, that's really helpful to me as well. Yeah, those those are great. You know, and this is this is a question that I have been wanting to know about for a while and maybe you can help me or point me in the right direction but Nazim brought this up as well uh, Jeff knows about this but I'm also curious on the copyright issue regarding photographers posting in Pinterest from Cynthia's point of view she's got a friend that's nervous of posting her stuff on Pinterest mm -hmm. Um, when it comes to photographers, um, I understand. I completely 100% understand that is your work. That is your livelihood. But you are putting it online somewhere, right? Um, that's how it's going to get to Pinterest. Right. Um, so if you are wanting to promote your services as a photographer or your art as a photographer, um, then make that clear, you know, that this is, you know, in the pin descriptions, if you want to join it, you know, be a part of Pinterest and all that kind of stuff. I know photographers don't like to hear this, but maybe watermark and brand your images if that's really important to you. Um, and let people know that this came from this photography studio or this, from this photographer. Um, if you're like, you know, maybe 
be a wedding photographer. Andrew Helmich is, is a very successful wedding photographer in Australia. He uses Pinterest really well and you know he's helping to grow his photography business by using Pinterest and he's done so. Well, some of his Pinterest boards rank for location photography in Australia number one on Google so it's helping his business. Right. Um, so we really have to kind of weigh the pros and the cons I guess for your individual business. There is also code available if you, you, you know you just don't want your pins shared on there. You don't want your images shared on there at all. You can install code onto your web website that make them unpinnable. The, pin, the images are still there, people can still visit your website and see your images, but then they won't be able to pin them. From that website, they can always take a screenshot and right. upload it to Pinterest. You know, it, there, there just isn't that perfect answer, unfortunately. Right. And, right. and if you do come across something on, let's say somebody does take one of your images or pins one of your images and then maybe changes the link or does something, somehow uses your image inappropriately, you can report copyright issues to Pinterest. I have received a couple of notifications of images that I have pinned and said, hey, we had we had to remove your pin for Pinterest. Um, you know, and they, it's like no big deal. You did nothing wrong. They just asked we got that we take it down. I'm like, okay, there we go. Good. Good advice. Well, it's already at the half hour mark, and we could I could sit here and talk and ask questions <laughs> to you all oh, day. Yeah. And people are just flooding the stream with questions, but we'll try to kind of go back after the show and answer some of those. But I, I have two questions I usually ask all my guests. And what were what were some of the mistakes that you made when you first started on Pinterest that maybe we could learn from? Uh, the very first one that I noticed was that I was bin pinging. <laughs> Pinning, binge pinning. Yeah. Uh, I would sit there and it's like, okay, now's my time to relax and really get in here and I can pin for myself, I can pin for my clients, have the TV on, the kids were off doing whatever it was they were doing, everybody was happy and I could just sit there and pin for everybody like in a solid two hour block or whatever it was um, that it would suck me into it. And I, so I was flooding my followers feed with pins, you know, or my clients' followers feed with pins, you know, in certain blocks of the day. Um, and we've quickly learned that it was best to scatter them out you know, through the day. Um, the second mistake that I made that I really had to change quickly was not thinking of Pinterest as a search tool. Um, and naming, I, for when I first started my account, it was a personal account way back when, and I uh, named my recipe board. Um, back then they gave you a few boards already. If you, if you see anybody with a, a board called Places and Spaces, they've, probably, they've had their account since the beginning gotcha. um, because that was one of the pre-generated boards that, P, that Pinterest would give you. And another one was also recipes. Um, it's like, that's just boring. I'm going to change it to something fun. I'm going to change it to things that make me say yum. Okay. Right. Yeah, they do make me say yum, right. and they're worthy enough for me to pin, but who's going to search for that? Right. Um, so I quickly changed it after I kind of thought about it to recipe hyphen things that make me say yum. You know, so, you know, and, and that's not my focus of my, my account right. right now, so it still works. Yeah, one of my most popular boards, uh, all it's titled is Geek, and that's Geek. it. And, and people <laughs> search for that, and they, they just, they read pin stuff on that like crazy. Yeah, so that's it's a just, very popular you know, thing on Pinterest. And the second question is, this is the Manly Pinterest Tip Show, so do you have any advice for guys who are getting started on Pinterest? Don't be afraid. It's okay. It's okay that you see all of that hair stuff. It's right. okay that when you first sign up, maybe you see, um, you know, some more food that you want to, more pink things than you want to be quickly, once you really get in there and refine your account, um, you're going to see the stuff that you want to see. You're not going to see hair tutorials and nail things and makeup guides if that's not what you want to see. Um, follow the boards. I think SmartFeed is going to help you just see the stuff that you're interested in. Search for the stuff that you're interested in. Follow those types of accounts and, and it'll quickly become a very manly version of Pinterest. There we go. Well, Cynthia, thanks so much for uh, being on. So where can we find, out, find you and interact with you and find out about you and your services if, uh, if people want to find out about that. Yeah, sure. The best place would be at ohsopinteresting.com. And we have the link in the actual show notes, so I appreciate uh, everyone. Man, you guys are blowing up the feed. Thank you so much for <laughs> yeah, thanks, have a guys. great live audience. They're, they're awesome. Uh, as always, we'd love for you to go to uh, mainlypinteresttips.com and click on the subscribe button to get be part of our uh, an email uh, community and that way you can find out when we're having great guests like Cynthia on the show today because we're always adding testosterone one pin at a time. Thanks so much for watching everybody. We'll see you next time.